Hello, and welcome to another All About Beer uh, tasting. Uh, the staff here of the magazine and the World Beer Festivals uh, get the opportunity to get together electronically with some of the people we admire most who uh, create the beverage we love best. So today, those of us here in Durham, North Carolina, are getting together electronically uh, with Boulevard Brewing Company in Kansas City, Missouri. Um, before we start, our apologies for a delay in starting today. It was, as they say, due to technical difficulties. We hope those are over and we can get on with the real business of the afternoon. Um, sitting here. We've just lost your microphone. Oh, she does marketing, circulation, all around whiz bang stuff, and she will be monitoring questions that people say. Um, I'm Julie Johnson. On my right, Chris Rice, our VP. And uh, up, up here, there we go, there's Lee Hamilton. He's in charge of special, all our special events, and uh, today he's also been making this tasting, this long distance tasting. So, Boulevard, gentlemen, please introduce yourselves. You first. Uh, my name is Trip Hogue. Um, I've been here at the brewery since the uh, beginning. Um, have been a uh, maintenance mechanic, been brewer, been filter master. Uh, currently, uh, I'm labeled as the entropy control specialist. Mm -hmm. um, what problems come down the pike usually wind up in my office whether it's uh, mechanical or resource or sourcing things. It's been my role uh, probably for the last decade. Prior to that, I was a uh, mechanic, lead mechanic, and now I'm uh, a resource person. Uh, my name is Stephen Pobles. Uh My job is not as interesting as trips. I'm just a brewmaster. Uh, and I, you know, what I do what brewmasters do. Whatever that is, yeah. And uh, then, Stephen, I think as the brewmaster, you get to choose the sequence of, of the, the beers we're tasting today. What should we start with? Uh, I'd start with pale ale first. Yeah. Let's do that. Yeah. So, trip, trip. I can't help but think that uh, every brewery wishes they had a clone of you. Yes. <laughs> I'll answer that question. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's, uh, and if you've been there longest, that's 1989, coming up on 25 years, right? August of 89 is uh, when I was invited to help. Uh, it was a very part-time offer, uh, which was good for me. Uh, I think that for the most part I was hired because I have a full set of metric tools. Um, I can kind of think on my feet and... I think that communication is one of my good skills as well, uh, to be able to share the problems and try to understand the problems. It seems to be what works well for us here. And Trip knows the power of beer. Great <laughs> <laughs> amazing things for a case of beer. Back in the day, we had more beer than uh, money, and uh, frequently it was beers for ball valves. Uh, go over to the supply house and procure all sorts of good things uh, just with some beer. And you have to give all of our suppliers uh, a nod because they had faith in the beer I was presenting to them. It was early years. But uh, all that's changed. We, we still have a great um, reward system for our people, our suppliers. They, uh, they like us. We like them. And uh, it's it's been a great thing. It's been a great time. Uh, much, much, much easier than working on automobiles, which was my previous employee. So, Trip, they didn't make you general counsel after that uh, interaction with the suppliers. No, no, no. Uh, there's. Uh, I think that suppliers are reasonable, and and other uh, other parts of the beer world, the legalese and the labels and all those other things. No, general counsel would not be my... <laughs> uh, we're, we're enjoying the pale ale here. Tell me, I mean, is this the same recipe that uh, 
John McDonald delivered is the, the in the back of his pickup truck as Boulevard's first beer? Well, it depends. If John's listening, yes. If he's not, <laughs> no, it's changed a little bit. <laughs> it just changed a little bit over the years. You know, you have to adjust a little bit. But uh, in essence, it's it's the same beer, really. It's uh, I remember when I started at Boulevard 14 years ago, I, you know, I tried all the different beers and it's like, okay, this beer is perfect as it is. There's just really nothing that needs to happen to this beer. It was. So in, in essence, it is still the same beer. Some supply, talking about suppliers, some you know malt supply chains and things like that. But um, we we keep it, keep it the same. We're we're happy about we're happy how it is and we're proud of it too. And for people who are watching who might be fooled by your impeccable English, we, we should tell folks that uh, Stephen, in fact, is from Belgium originally. And w when did you join Boulevard? Uh, I joined in '99. Okay. Uh, May '99, actually. So that's. 14 years this year, uh, this month. Congratulations. Congratulations. Yeah. So how, how are you you're going to celebrate a 15th anniversary and the brewery's 25th anniversary? What do you have planned? Oh, now you're putting me on the spot. Um, you know, I, I haven't thought about it yet. Um, but we'll come up with something interesting. I, I don't know. <laughs> Very good. Well, this panel is fantastic. It, it, there, there is nothing wrong with it. Classic American pale ale. Nice, nice floral aroma as well. Right, uh, Cascade hops. Mm. Uh, you know, and it's it's uh, to me it's staple of the whatever uh, the base for uh, craft beer. Really, is Cascade, and I think over the years a lot of brewers have moved away from Cascade. And, you know, look at Centennial and Amarillo and all those, you know, more uh, newer hops varieties. But we, over the last couple of years, we've gone back to Cascade really, and it's. Uh, it's, to me, it's almost like a base block. If you want to make hoppy beer, Cascade has to be part of it. <laughs> so. Stephen, cast your mind back 15 years. What were the main adjustments you had to make uh, to, to integrate yourself into the American craft beer community? Uh, learn to speak English. <laughs> 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 um, you know, it's a... Uh, it's a total different industry than what you have overseas, for sure. Um, this is a very huge camaraderie, uh, very open, um, and uh, people in this industry uh, are extremely motivated, um, especially in every brewery, really, where I walk in is people, even if you, it's, even if it's a guy who washes kegs or if it's, uh, you know, whoever it is, or tapping beer or whatever they do, they're always so interested. Uh, over in Europe, it's for a lot of people. It's just a job, huh. and uh, and here it's you know I'm making beer. Over there, it's like well I make beer for a living, but or you know I'm on a, a packaging line, and that that was probably the main thing that really got me going here at Boulevard. And what I was so interested in is, well this is the Midwest. People are extremely friendly. Um, they're and they're very helpful. And I was just blown away when I walked through the door here the first time. Like, I didn't know people like this existed. Not that people <laughs> are, happy or, you know, are friendly, but it's a different level, definitely. Yeah. Very nice. Well, what, what do we have next here? I'm going to take a sip first. Oh, oh yeah, sorry. Please, please, do. Do. please do. Please do. Uh, next, we should do, um, let's do Long Strange Triple. Um, and as you can see, uh, I'll just show it. Who's on the label is Trip. Yeah, I was. So, woo, woo. There we go. Good Sorry. job. It was nice. <laughs> so the long, long, strange triple is in your honor, Trip. Uh, it is. Um, it's. Uh, it's a pretty unique honor uh, in any form of beer making or beverage stuff. It seems like, a, yeah, I, I don't know of another guy that's got his face on a label. <laughs> I'm still alive. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. I'm still alive. Uh, yeah. <laughs> not uh, some really, really older dude. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's a thing that's huge fun. I mean, I was uh, I'm just a old hippie mechanic that has wound up uh, Living the life here, it's uh, it's a wonderful, as Stephen says, the camaraderie and the uh, 
the love we all have for one another and what we do is uh, it's unparalleled in anything I've ever been involved with. But uh, it's and it's grown from uh, what a bunch of goofy guys you are over there trying to make beer to uh, some amazing responses we have from city leaders, from other people in the community. Uh, we've really become players uh, in a good way. It's, it's a, the, the respect we have now is it's huge. It's, it's an unexpected delight for me. I, I have a great time. Well, this beer, the beer is a wonderful tribute to you, sir. <laughs> good, good. It's, uh, it's a, actually it's a tribute to a lot of things that we all hold dear. Um, to be uh, uh, dedicated to your work, to be able to uh, stay focused on things, and uh, this at the end of the day is a great reward. Mm -hmm. That's Hey, we've got uh, a couple questions from uh, Google side. Stephen, uh, first question is from Steve. Uh, his question is, what made you come over to the U.S.? Uh, that's a great question. Um, in the late 90s, a lot of breweries were bought by uh, bigger uh, breweries. And uh, so the jobs, job availability then in, in Belgium was kind of minimal. Um, you know, there's a... Now, 15 years later, craft beer is popping up about everywhere, but this, we called it in those days specialty beer. It was owned by family breweries, and it was it was shrinking, and it was, uh, and I really didn't want to work for a big brewery. I, you know, maybe one day I will, but not yet, or you know, I don't know. I'm just saying, you know, that, that was the, the other opportunity was really to go and work for you know big, one of the big breweries in Europe, and I really didn't see myself fitting in there. So. That was the reason, and uh, I I liked the the, the uh, craft brewing scene in the late '90s. I think I followed it all the way through the '90s, um, and from Belgium, and I thought, wow, this is really really spectacular. Here we are making the same beers traditionally, good beers, but there was not a lot of innovation going on. Uh, and now, um, 15 years later, when I go back to Belgium and they're trying to make an IPA, I'm just I'm just giggling really because it's uh you know. <laughs> They're different than what we do in the U.S. Yeah, <clears throat> very much. Well, tell us a little bit about the triple. How did the uh, how did the recipe come together? How did the beer come together? Um, well, this is a this is one of the beers from the Smokestack series. And when we started Smokestack series, it was really to kind of push the boundaries that we, of the beers that we were making. We were making them for a while, but we wanted to put them in in a really different way in a big bottle with a champagne cork and things like that. And we wanted to make four different beers. And uh, the idea behind it was, well, let's just focus on four ingredients of beer. Well, on water, we couldn't do a lot, but let's focus on malt um, and yeast and, and hops. And this is the example for me as of what yeast can do. It has this nice banana flavor, flavor little clove, uh, but it's so fruity and so you know, typical Belgian, I guess, um, but elegant. And uh, it's one of my favorite beers. Um, it's, I'm just growing, I grew up with these beers and, uh, I'm just really happy that I'm, I've been able to make this here in Kansas, in Kansas city. It's delicious. Yeah, th this is, this is a delightful beer. Um, I mean, as you say, lots of banana, uh, some citrus and it wears the alcohol very lightly. Right. Very spicy, uh, well carbonated. This is, this is, this is a treat and very well done. Thank you. I'm glad you mentioned that carbonation because that's a key ingredient for a good triple. You know, oh. Otherwise, they become a little too sweet, a little too cloying, but you've got to have that carbonation that kind of cleans your palate so you're ready to take another sip. Exactly. And, on and, on. Yeah. and Trip, looking at the label, are, are you a Grateful Dead fan? Of course. <laughs> uh, have been that for uh, considerably longer than I've been here. Uh, <laughs> yeah, early 70s uh, would be when I claim to have been converted. Um, but uh, there's not just me, there's several of us here at the brewery that uh, wear that mantle. And uh, it just kind of came together, the whole long, strange trip, triple 
Um, I had been the longest uh, tenured employee at the time, still am, um, and somehow sitting around the table, what a long, strange trip it's been, came to light, played into long, strange triple very well. I really didn't have any uh, complaints with being used like this. Uh, <laughs> and I thought it could be fun, and it has proved to be a great time. Uh, just last night we were at uh, a local pub uh, signing beer bottles. Uh, we're like rock stars. It's, it's crazy, but great fun. Uh, and people out in our our group, our fans, our people, they. We had a great time last night, uh, as did the rest of us. Uh, so again, one of the last things I ever expected to be doing in my life. <laughs> <laughs> well, good for you. Yeah. Good for you guys. But, uh, the, uh, the, the Long Strange Triple is kind of unique in that it's because of what Stephen says about the carbonation levels and how uh, important a part it plays in the flavor profile, it's not a thing that we offer in draft form anywhere in any way. Uh, and so it's not as uh, visible in, out there in the market, yet the people that are hip to it are extremely hip to it and, and dig it a lot. It's really a lot of fun. Uh, I, we've, got, we've got a couple more questions uh, that have come in from people watching. Uh, <clears throat> Craig asks, when will Boulevard Beer come to Arizona? They're in dire need of some Tank 7. And no. speaking of that, we have uh, someone looking for it in Houston. <laughs> in Houston, we, we sell beer in Houston. They should be able to find it. Uh, don't we have an app or something, like a beer finder? I think we have a beer finder app on our website. So you could find it and uh, look at what stores are serving it. Arizona is a little different story. Uh, and, you know, um, we're in the, in the first place. We're a Midwest brewery. We have been expanded our sales territory. It's uh, but um, you know, I say never. I, I say uh, and I never say never. I guess it, it might happen, but I'm not sure when. Uh, but for now, um, I apologize that it's not available. But I'll drink one for you. Another <laughs> <laughs> question. Um, Mike is asking about Tank Seven again. Uh, is it still? only gone through that tank or has it expanded with its popularity you know if it only was going through that tank we would have had to uh, you know kind of you no know, squeeze that tank or how do you how do you say that you know expand expand, expand the tank, tank tank stretchers yeah we don't have those so um, it's not only made in tank 7 anymore no. you have you have to explain the story of tank 7 yeah actually that leads into the next beer uh, to saison bread because we were making saison was a one of the four initial beers that we made and um, it wasn't really selling all that great. Uh, I love the beer, and maybe one day we'll make it again. But we were making a base beer for Saison Bread, which was a little stronger, a little more flavorful, a little, uh, also a little dry hopped. And it was sitting in tank seven. Um, we were waiting for the Brettanomyces to be ready. And uh, every evening I go out and go to the patio in the brewery, and people are drinking the same beer. Everybody's drinking the same beer, the beer from tank seven which was the base beer for Saison Bread. And uh, everybody loved it so much that we decided to discontinue Saison and bring out Tank 7. And our marketing people were uh, kind of searching for a name and we're like, well, I think we already have a name. I think <laughs> everybody knows already it's the beer from Tank 7. So we're going to call it Tank 7. And it's been extremely popular. Huge, it's uh, huge yeah, it's for been, us. Yeah. It's been uh, very successful. How much will you produce of uh, both uh, Tank 7 or any of the other smokestack series? Um, I think last year we uh, close to 12,000 barrels, and uh, Tank 7 is close to uh, well, probably 40% or so. It's definitely wow. the leader. Yeah. We, uh, our our uh, panel called Beer Talk reviewed Tank 7 in the current issue of All About Beer and sang its praises. And uh, Stephen, you show up in a, in a feature in an upcoming issue of All About Beer about Belgian brewers working in America. So uh, All About Beer is for a while All About Boulevard. Well, thank you very much. I, uh, thank you. Appreciate well, it. Well, they're good stories. Good beer. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> Can we open that? Sure. Say John Brad, please. Sure. <laughs> 
everyone was very happy to see Saison Brett was uh, on, on the list today. Well, we're proud of it, too. You're doing a good job there. <laughs> Looks like Lee shot him. Where's he? Where's 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 Tripp going? Oh, he's he's here. He's taking glasses. Oh, good. All right. Just getting fresh glasses. So tell us about saison bread, please. So, yeah, saison bread is uh, the the idea behind it is what is a saison, and I haven't found an answer yet. Uh, but all I know is that I think it's supposed to be earthy. Um, you know. Nice foam. Everything I hear about it has has to have a nice white foam, and it has to be earthy. So, our search to make a beer more earthy came came out to maybe we should put some Brettanomyces in it, and uh, that's what we did. So we bottled the beer with a little bit of Brettanomyces, then we aged it for three months before we release it. Uh, so I see that the white hat worked on your glass. Beautiful. Look at this. Totally. Yeah. Fantastic. A gorgeous white hat. Absolutely. I'm getting earthy. Yes. <laughs> Good. Mm. Mm, but lots of lots of tropical notes. There we go. Mm. There we go. Is this working? Yeah. That's Pardon. lovely. Now will will the will the bread character become more more dominant with time? Yes, yes. This this beer has been uh, we're releasing it this week, I think, or pretty soon here in, in our markets. Um, and the bread keeps going. I, I like, I prefer the beer this way because you have some fruit. There's some, like you said, tropical fruit. There's some malt character still. There's hoppiness in the beer, and the bread is there. You definitely can taste the bread. But as as the beer ages, the bread just keeps going and and um, reduces the the fruit aromas, reduces all the other characteristics, and you know basically all that's left is a funky beer. Uh, so if if that's what you like, then I'd say buy a bottle and keep it for a little bit. Um, we give the beer two years, but I've, I have to say after three years, the hoppiness comes back. And I've talked to a lot of other people who work with bread and mice, and um, it seems like we're not the only ones who, who are noticing that. Don't ask me why. I have no explanation for it. But um, I think the, the bread and mice goes really wild for a while, then after three years, some of the flavors reduced and the hop character comes back through. Um, wow. It's an interesting beer. Yeah, that's fascinating. I'd never heard of that. Oh, really? Well, yeah. It's a good day when you learn something, right? That's right. That, that's yeah. right. Um, Stephen, have you ever made Saison in Belgium, or did you have to come to the United States to make your first Saison? Uh, I had to come to the U.S., yeah. <laughs> You know, for when I left Belgium, saisons weren't really that popular. I think they're pretty much dying. Uh, there were like a handful of breweries still making it, and um, yeah, I, I think you have to contribute the renaissance of saisons to the American brewers. Uh, huh. I think mainly because it's uh, it's there's not too much known about the style, and it's a very open category, and you can do whatever you want, uh, which is how I like to uh, approach beers too. Well, this one's wonderful. Um, I think this is uh, this would be my choice to, to drink this beer right now. The, and the, I mean, you do get the malt flavor, mm -hmm. which the uh, bread, as you said, will uh, will overrun in not too long. But th this is just very fresh and full of a variety of different flavors. Yeah, it's uh, you know the Brettanomyces gives a beer just a we call it a different dimension. You know, there's so much you can do, only so much you can do with the regular yeast, and then you put the Brettanomyces in, and all of a sudden you have this different aromas. Um, I'm a big fan of wines from the, from, from you know, some older uh, chateaus and stuff that have a little bit of their Brettanomyces. It just adds character. Um, it was interesting to read that, I read here recently that um, UC Davis is um, telling winemakers a little bit of bread is not a bad idea. And uh -huh. it's nice to read that, yeah. Ooh. That's interesting. So I'm looking forward to some more ready wines from the new in the new world here. <laughs> I I thought I thought Brettanomyces was the scariest thing you could say to a winemaker. Yeah, probably. Yeah. <laughs> they uh, they not always let me in when I show up at a bottle of Brettanomyces beer, but <laughs> you can leave it at the gate, but you can come in, but leave the beer at the gate usually. Yeah. <laughs> Now, one thing we've noticed in the course of doing these tastings, when we have a chance to um, to, to taste several beers from, from one brewery, um, sometimes we detect or perhaps we imagine 
uh, a consistent theme from beer to beer. What strikes me about all three of these is that uh, is, is a certain amount of restraint. None of them are over the top. The pale ale has lovely hops, but it doesn't hit you with hops. Um, the triple is beautifully balanced, and again, the you know the alcohol is very reined in. Uh, lovely carbonation, nice fruit, but nothing over the top. And here, if this is your preferred way to have saison bread, again, the the the, the bread character is is hanging back a little bit. Um, is this a quality you? I rule here. At Sorry, we, we, we dropped off. For a okay, all right. Well, I think the question was what uh, that we all these beers have a common theme that they're balanced. Is that kind of the question? Is that yeah, you don't you don't go go too far in any one direction. I think. Well, I think yeah, we we try not to. Maybe in the future we might have to because you know a little bit more extreme is what you know customers want maybe. But uh, our our brewing philosophy is very very simple. Um, a beer, if you have a glass of beer from us, it should ask for another one. And that's any kind of beer that we make. It could be a session beer, it could be really like a triple or saison bread. You taste it and you go like, that's asking for another glass. And that's exactly what we want. Mm. Yeah. Now we've had two from the Smokestack series today. Are, are both of them year round or saison bread is, is, a, is an annual release? Yeah, it's a, it's a limited release. We make it once a year. And it, it usually releases late spring, early summer. Um, and uh, yeah, we have a couple of these beers, but uh, Long Strange Triple is the year round beer. Okay. Do, so, we have, do we have questions here? We do. Uh, we have some more questions. So, Steve, who asked uh, about why you came over to the US, his question is back on the Saison Brett. Is it fermented with 100% Brett or a mix of Saison strain in primary and then Brett to finish the attenuation in secondary to dry it out? Uh, yeah, we, we're, uh, I like yeast, every brewer I think likes yeast, so what we do is we minimize the amount of yeast strains that we use, and we have one strain that we make uh, triple with, uh, si uh, tank seven, six glass, we, we use that yeast for a lot of different things, so we don't use a typical saison yeast to make saison bread. What we do is, in the bottle conditioning that we do on these beers, we use champagne yeast, and then we add a little bit of Brettanomyces in that mix. Um, for the bottle conditioning. So the, the champagne yeast will basically do the bottle conditioning and then it's up to the bread to create its flavors slowly but surely and increase the CO2 a little bit as it ages. So it's not 100% bread beer. We use the bread, it's like a, you know, basically just spicing, spicing the beer up. That's what we're trying to do. Yeah. No, that's it right now. Okay. Well, we are uh, enjoying these beers very much, and since it's afternoon, we can probably all uh, slip back to our desks with a top-up of our favorite beer from this tasting. Uh, <laughs> Good. <laughs> we really appreciate your joining us and, and putting up with the, the delay in getting this started. Um, as Daniel says, anything you want to ask us? No, I'm okay. I'm, uh, I uh, appreciate your interest in all things we do, and... Uh, uh, carry on the good work you do. <laughs> Spread the word. Well, You're proud to do that. You know, when, when you decide what you're going to do for your 25th anniversary, uh, let us know. We're, uh, I'm thinking, you know, a, a, another fantastic beer, limited for, you know, limited edition for the Smokestack series. Who knows? But uh, congratulations on the upcoming anniversary, multiple anniversaries, and uh, thank you so much for these lovely beers. Well, you're very welcome. Thank very you very welcome. much. Thank you. Thanks, Bye -bye. guys. Cheers. Yeah.